Franey. Uh, I'm a musician, worship leader, multi-instrumentalist, producer, and I'm a fellow obsessor. Today I'm obsessing over my template, temp, 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 template, mixed template for Logic. And basically this is uh, for Spring Hill. This is our current Spring Hills November, coming up on November 2020, mixed template for Logic for my team at Spring Hill. So for all of you guys who are working with me there at Spring Hill, I'm actually, this video is showing you exactly how to open up the template, set the template up for Sunday morning live stream. Now, most of the stuff is already set, luckily, uh, so you're going to open it up. I'm going to show you exactly how to open the template in Logic and then get right to it. So first of all, you're going to go into the computer and find out the most recent template with temp. I can't say the word. I can't say the word. Template. You're going you're gonna to get that. Now, for you who are not at the Church of Spring Hill with me doing this, you can actually get this template. Template. You can get this file right from the link in the description of this video. You can get the last one, and then I'm going to upload this one today. So you can actually do this for yourself, for your church. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out of here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go, I'm going to make this the big one. So you can see this is the logic template. And I'm going to give you a couple shortcut template. Temp, I'm going to quit saying that word. I'm going to give you a couple shortcuts. X, the letter X on the keyboard will open and close. If you're on a single monitor, will open and close the mix window. Okay, so you can see that this is some recordings that I've done. Now, we're not recording our services yet, necessarily. We're just, but I have this kind of loop here uh, to, to train. Also, if you have logic in your studio that you're, and you're training along with, with our church, or your church, you can actually get, um, I think I'm going to leave this file in there so you can actually play around with it. So... What you can do is you can take this and drag this little yellow thing right here across the top, and it gives you a little loop. And that's what I'm going to loop today. And I believe that there is really no vocal in this, so I'm going to talk about... Um, I'm not sure if I didn't record the Maddie vocal on this set. I don't think I did. So I'll go back here later. But uh, basically, so you open it up, you can see this is the recorded stuff. Um, you can see if you hit X, then you have all of this. Okay, this is what we have. So how I have this set up is I have a drum group, a cymbal group, which I may sum those together, a band group, and a vocal group, and then I have Jess, which, which is our pastor, which you can put, I'll just call this pastor for now, if you guys are not there. Maybe your pastor's name isn't Jess. Maybe he's not as cool as our pastor. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Pads, one, so this is pads coming off the mix, uh, coming off the mixer, you'll hear that woo sound. Room mic, main verb. Okay, and then these are basically just outs. Um, I've got this stereo fader cranked just for training because of input levels here in my studio, but this would usually be at zero. I'm gonna crank that up for now, master. So basically the stereo out, all this should just be at zero. These blue ones are, are, are um, groups and they should be at zero. And then um, basically when you go to open up like the drums, you can see the kick, kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, tom, floor tom. And then if you open up the symbols, we have symbols. Now, the reason I grouped these in the beginning like this is because I wanted to have like group EQs. Our computer is kind of slow, so I was trying to kind of say, okay, for all the symbols, I'm going to use this one EQ. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, I think I'm going to fix that, but whatever. If you see a group, you can open it. You can actually mute this group, and it will mute all of them in the group, I believe. So if you want to, you can mute all of them in the group. So if I mute these groups, this is great for when pastor goes to speak. You can unmute pastor, and you can just close these and mute these all. Okay, so they're kind of like group, mute groups. I actually think you could actually, I don't do this, but we could set up to where you can mute these over here as well, just if you wanted to mute them. But I've been muting them in, in instrument groups, so if you do that, then you would hear nothing else, okay? And the pads in our service are actually also running with the computer, so I left those un ungrouped in the pastor. So when he's preaching, these are all muted. When the band goes back up, I sort of unmute the, all just these four groups, okay? So that's the most simple version. I know that you can do a lot more grouping and muting and all that, but I want to keep this simple. This is the most simple version of this I have. Uh, when you're there, you can actually name these people. You can click and name them. You can do that if you need to. If somebody's up there, like if there's a different singer for that Sunday, just name them. Just, you know, handheld one, handheld two. Um, you can name that stuff. Other than that, you, could, you don't have to name anything. Uh, but if you want to, just for your thing, acoustic one, acoustic two, electric one, you can leave those pretty much the same and leave these. But for vocalist, I like to just kind of say who's on there for that week. And then let's get to, uh, I did a, how to build a mix. We're not going to do that today. This is just an overview of using 
logic. If you see that the blue, these are like compressors, channel, EQ, if you see these are blue, that means they're active. If they're off, then they're gray. You can actually turn them off by clicking that little button, okay? But if you see that they're on, they should mostly be on unless you're trying to save some space, save some stuff. These should all be on if you open these. How I have this set up right now in this template is the main reverb is a chroma verb. I've got it set up. It sounds pretty nice. Anything that's got reverb on it right now is going through that reverb. So bus one is that reverb. So anything you see on there, we kick in is not really, is not really, um, we don't have a kick in, so it doesn't really matter. I don't, that doesn't need to be in there. In fact, I could delete this fader altogether and it would be fine. And I might do that right now. Let's just delete that, uh, delete it anyway, kick in. Hopefully that doesn't break anything. Wow, that was crazy. Okay, we, we can't input monitor. So how you set that up, you open up your uh, thing, and I'm just going to name this kick. And it, it I'm going to change this input here because it's actually picking up my voice in there. That's what that was doing. All right, so we got kick in. Is this what it is? Let me see if I got kick still. Okay. All right, so... So you've got your template, you kind of know what it is. You have one main verb, you can send. What I have sending to the verbs right now are vocals. So I have like bus one and two and three. I've got a little bit of acoustic. I kind of just verb at a little bit of stuff here and there. And then we have our room mic, which you can see is just barely in there. So let me talk about the verbs and the room mic and then I'll go into the mix. So when you play this, if you solo the room mic, it sounds like this. So it's just a little bit of the room. And if you want to listen to the reverb, you can listen to this. Uh, let's see where it is. Oh, solo. Try to unmute these all for you guys. So, so whatever's coming through the reverb uh, bus is going to be heard there, okay? When you are in church, when you are ready to go live, you have to, you have to put input monitoring. You have to click I on all of these things. Input monitoring has to be on. If it's not on, it's not going to come through. Okay. That won't matter for this video right here, but for when you go live, you're going to open up the session, click input monitoring, input monitoring on all these channels that have an I by them. Uh, you don't need anything record enabled unless you're going to record a snippet. This is a snippet I recorded. So if you record enable everything, um, well, if you record enable everything, it's uh, when it's hooked up, you can go into a new part of the session and hit record, and it can record some of this. So then you could go back and listen between services. Uh, would not be hitting record during service. I'm talking about during rehearsal. If you hit record, it kind of clicks and you know kind of rolls through. So don't hit record during service, but like during rehearsal, I like to record a minute or so of like a fast song and maybe a minute or so of a slow song. Then after they're all done practicing, I can go back and listen, and I can make twi tweaks to the mix before the service goes live, before we go live. Uh, so that's what I, and then I have something also to bring home and listen to and, and mix uh, for you guys. So you can uh, look at the drums, look at the cymbals, look at the bass, look at the vocals. You know you got some vocals going to the main reverb. You've got your room mic just a little bit in there. And then let me see, I'm gonna turn Derek's mic down on this, and I'm gonna show you guys what this sounds like. Jesus, the only one that we could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever We live for you. We live for you. Okay, so the problem with this recording is I didn't have Maddie's mic record enabled, so she's really singing this. And uh, so let's bump back to another section from last m month. I think over here I have some of Maddie's vocals, and let's see if we got her there. Okay. Well, because it was um, on it, let's make sure I can get this here. This is more of her. What? 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 That too loud. All right, let's turn her way down. Here we go. Okay, so they're just goofing around there, and that's the thing of this little recording that I'm doing for you today. There's not, um, Building up. I, don't, I don't have like a ton of program material to mess with, so 
That's why I won't get into vocals, but let's just look at the drums. Let's do that because we were doing pretty good when we were doing that. There's a good set of drums right here. After tomorrow's rehearsal, I'm going to have a lot more material, but check this out. Okay, remember I'm hitting X to go back and forth. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the vocals and talk to you guys just a little about the mix. I do have a video where I build a mix, where I was training Emily and I was showing her how I build the mix. So you're basically just listening to the drums, the bass, the band, setting up your mix like you would a normal mix. You're not getting super involved in the EQs. In general, the EQs and the compressions are mostly set in the template during rehearsal. And then during when you're there on Sunday morning, you're just sort of uh, leveling stuff out, writing a fader, making sure that your levels are good. And then most of our stuff is set like our compression the EQ on the master fader, all of that stuff, finding if there's any problems, but mostly not changing this template a whole bunch uh, outside of rehearsal, when you get there on Sunday, we're just sort of making sure that everything's right. So let's listen to it and see what we have here right now. I'm going to turn off the room mic for now. You got a little pad, bass, drums. The bass is here in the band. I think I muted the acoustics. There they go. Whoa, there you go. Okay, so on the acoustics, I have them like 25 left to 25 right. On the electric, I've got them panned a little bit over. I've got the toms panned a bit over. I've got the hi-hat panned and the and the um, overheads panned over a little bit. And just creating some space in there. And then on vocals, they're a dead center. And then, you know, you have just a pr pretty good mix here. These are very, you know, very low faders. I'm not sure why that's so... That's why my master fader needs to be so low. So I can actually turn this down. I'm going to build this mix. Let's build this mix again um, right now. And actually, I think I'm going to go ahead. And uh, so now that you have to kind of overview, I'm going to do another video where I'm just going to build the mix up with you guys that I'm working with at Spring Hill. So mostly X is what I've been using. Just if I need to get back and forth, there's nothing you need to do here. Make sure when you're in the live stream studio, live stream when you're actually going, you don't have this over here in any program material. If you accidentally hit the space bar, this happens. You know, so take this off, put your put your header, footer, your um, playhead over here, and then go X. You're into the you're into the actual mix. When you got everything, you got everything on I. So input monitoring. Once you get the drums mixed during rehearsal, you can kind of close these up so you don't have to mess with them. And then you're not, you're just going to be writing faders a little bit. So we're going to go build this mix from the bottom up in the next video. I'll call it part two. Um, no, just wanted to let you know that's where the bus is going. Our computer's getting more powerful. We're upgrading our computer this week, which means we can use more plugins. So as we go, you'll see that this is a very simple. Uh, running on an iMac that's 2015 with only 8 gig of RAM, this runs pretty good. It still jumps a bit, but you know it doesn't have to be so much. I just have turned off any plugins that I don't absolutely need for the service because they do uh, they do slow the computer down. So if you just turn them off like this and they're gray, then they're fine. They're not going to slow your computer down. So when you when when you're getting a slow computer, you can just turn some plugins off. Uh, but don't turn, try not to turn the reverbs off, and those are really important. The reverbs and room mic, as you know, as I build a mix, are very important. So I'm going to end this video for the sake of just having a good, clean uh, video for you guys to watch. And I'm going to start another live video here in about five minutes. And it's going to be building a mix from zero up. So I'm going to zero these faders out. And I'm going to build this mix. So when you get to church and you're starting to like, oh, I'm just getting to practice, making sure everything's right. You can like listen and build the mix. The mix is probably mostly going to be built for you already, but you need to see the process of how I'm doing this so that if you get kind of confused or everything kind of, sort of sounds weird, you could go, okay, let me just start at the bottom, build this mix today up. Because that's the thing with church. Everything does change. Things change. Things go one week, they bring a different bass in. One week, they, you know, they might move, we move the drum mics or something happens. Uh, or the guy's playing really hard and the guy's playing really soft the next week. So you're going to have to sort of, build a little bit of the mix each week but in general once you get once it's the sonic characters of this don't change a lot week to week 
which is good. So uh, check that video out. It'll be up on the YouTube channel. It'll be the very next live video I do. We're going to build a mix from zero to top. Get this template. If you are not at the Church at Spring Hill and you need this template, you can get it right off the website, worshipthekeng.com. And uh, if you want to train your teams all together with me online, you can do that. Join at worshipthekeng.com slash join. God bless you guys. I'll see you on the next video uh, pretty soon here today.